So nostalgia got the better of me and I decided to restart my PS2 collection. So I thought I'd share uh, what games we got, why I got them, where I got them from and how much I paid. I'm sure a lot of you were like me, I was poor growing up so whenever I wanted to get a new game it was a calculated and almost bribing situation with my parents trying to decide how much money I was going to put aside for it, what they could put aside for it, and in most cases what I'd trade in. And that didn't just go for the games I bought, it also went for the consoles. I traded in a Sega Saturn for the PS2. I traded in the PS2, I think it might have actually been for a DS because I was really desperate to have one at the time, and then that got traded in for an Xbox One. And nostalgia won over. I decided to start recollecting and I focused on the console that I had the most nostalgia for, the PS2. I actually decided to restart this collection whilst doing a recent video, 10 video games that died, were they any good? And I covered the first game I picked up, NBA Street Volume 2. Now, this game meant so much to me as a kid. I played it loads. I was already a fan of EA Big through SSX Tricky, another game that I actually need to pick up for this collection. But NBA Street Volume 2 was really special. The name speaks for itself, right? You play basketball on the street. But the artwork, the visuals, the way it was brought to life, the commentary, the music, everything made it really special and fit in really well with the skate culture, the anime culture and the overall big aesthetics that EA Big were really pushing at that time. And, and it's a game I really loved and unfortunately you can't even play it on the PlayStation anymore. You can't get it on the Xbox store. Even though they're released on both those consoles, it's a game that you can't really play unless you play it on one of the consoles it came out on. Now I picked this up from CEX and this is where I probably made my first mistake no! and it's being eager to pick up a game because I was really excited to play it and didn't want to wait. So I'm quite far from the nearest city and driving to a CEX to pick the game up, it, it cost me more petrol than it's worth. However, CEX put a delivery charge of three pounds per game you buy off them. This is probably because they normally come from different stores, but obviously it means it racks up really quickly. This game was six pounds on CEX. It was actually out of stock for ages. So as soon as I saw it come in stock, I, I picked it up plus the three pounds delivery. So nine pounds, you can pick this up cheaper. 100%. The thing that I am a bit gutted about, however, is that it didn't come with a manual. And I'm hoping to pick up collections with all the manuals, so at some point I'll probably do a bit of searching on eBay and try and uh, pick up the manual for it. Or if I see it cheap with a manual somewhere, I'll pick it up and then sell this one on. So yeah, I've been playing that a lot. It's a game I'm really happy to have in my collection. And it actually went on to uh, encourage me to buy FIFA Street, also by EA Big. We won't spend too much time talking about it because it's the same kind of thing as NBA Street. It's a game I loved because of the aesthetic. I wasn't really into football games other than the management games for some reason. I played football at school, but I really wasn't into FIFA or any of those games or Pro Evolution Soccer. This game, however, changed it and I think it's just that because it was fun and had a really good soundtrack. And the soundtrack, when replaying it, really stands out to day two. It's got some really cool people in there. I paid £3.59 for this from World of Books. Now World of Books are actually quite interesting because they don't charge any delivery fee and they've often got some really good offers. Now that wasn't an incredible offer, you can pick it up from £2.50 from CEX but they obviously charge the £3 delivery fee. Um, I wanted to play it, I wanted to add it to my first batch of games, so I was pretty happy paying for that. However, it didn't come with a manual. I've learned since then that they generally include the manual in the photos on World of Books, which is really useful because with CEX, they generally don't or they charge more, it seems like, on the website at the moment with manuals. So yeah, keep an eye on World of Books. Onto a game that I also covered on the video, 10 video games that died, and it's uh, Circus Maximus Chariot Wars. Now I've got to say, this game is brutally difficult and I, I really didn't remember that but I've been really enjoying playing it again it's, it's a chariot racing game but you also have a guy on the back that you fight with it's got swords you upgrade your weapons you upgrade your chariots you've got to balance the chariot with the guy on the back when you go around corners which is really difficult when I started playing it I really couldn't believe that younger me had the patience to put up with that but if you do have the patience to get through the tutorials and to learn the mechanics it's a really fun and punishing game that has a lot of reward to it and I've been really enjoying playing and I'm kind of gutted that there isn't another game like this right now. It feels like something that would be really cool 
to have redone. I thought that would be the case when I covered it in the other video. I thought it would be a really cool game that would stand out, but it's been really cool going back to it and, and seeing that's really the case. And I'll probably do a more in-depth video on it on the channel soon. So I picked this up for £3.69 from Music Magpie, another website that generally has offers on and that doesn't charge any delivery. It's actually 19p more expensive than in CEX, but obviously CEX charges a £3 delivery, so it worked out cheaper. What I will say is if you've got the patience to look out for it, or if you live near a city that's got a big CEX, then it might be worth just going in and picking it up from there. You might even find it cheaper on places like Depop or Vinted if you've got the patience to message people and do a bit of bartering, which most of the time I don't, unless it's for a game that is really expensive generally or that I'm having a difficult time finding. I was pretty happy with this one though, because it came with the manual, the game was in really good condition, the manual was in really good condition, uh, and that's exactly what I want out of my collection. Okay, onto a game that I'm really excited to try out. I haven't yet because I think Jane and me are gonna play it together and do a video for it on the channel. It is called Kuri Kuri Mix. At least it is in Japan and Europe. I think the rest of the world it's called The Adventures of Cookie and Cream. And the reason it stood out, there's actually two. One, the cover, I mean, honestly, isn't that adorable? It looks amazing. But the second is because it's from Software, a company that I absolutely love. I'm a massive Dark Souls fan, a massive Elden Ring fan, and that's really not what I expect from them. So I wanted to jump in, have a look, play it. I remember seeing it on shelves as a kid. It's not something that would have stood out to me as a kid because I was at that age where I thought cartoony stuff was uh, below me. I was a bit too grown up for it. Now, I definitely don't think that way. I love anything cartoony, so definitely excited to try that one out. Unfortunately for me, the From Software collection on PS2 can get really pricey. There are some that aren't, like this one. I picked this up from World of Books again for £3.14, which is actually cheaper than in CEX. It's £4 over there, and they don't charge delivery, and it came with a manual. The manual is pretty uh, tattered up. No rips, which is good, but yeah, you can definitely see it's been used. It's been scrunched up a bit but at least it's got the manual. I might try and replace it if I see a nicer version of it at some point. And hopefully I can find some more from software games to add it to it too. There's a few I've got my eyes on it. Some are fairly affordable, some get uh, extremely pricey, so I'm gonna have to do some hunting for those. On to the next game that I picked up. I haven't heard too many people talk about it, but it's called The Mark of Cree. The Mark of Cry? I'm going with Cree, I think. It's an action adventure game that I really enjoyed as a kid. It's one of the games that I remember completing and wishing there'd been more. It's quite a short game, and I think there was a follow-up called The Rise of Kasai, which I haven't played yet. I'll pick it up for the collection at some point, but I'm excited to go back through this game and see if it actually was as good as I remember it being. So I'll go back through that. I'll do a video for the channel. I picked it up from World of Books again for £3.84. Could have got it cheaper. It's a pound on CEX, but obviously they charge £3 delivery. So that would have cost me more. You can find it cheaper, although it's not one that I've seen on shelves that often when I've been searching myself. And the good thing about this purchase is that it came again with a manual in really good condition, which uh, I'm really happy about. That's exactly what we want. In fact, it even had the inlays advertising some other games, including War of the Monsters, which I can't remember, but that cover looks awesome. And uh, I'm probably gonna have to look into that at some point. It's one of those situations where it's worth considering if you want to save that pound from CEX where it generally won't come with the manual or you're kind of gambling on it or whether you'd rather go for somewhere like World of Books where it actually had the photo of it with the manual, cost a pound more, free delivery. So I think that's a good addition to the collection and we'll go on to the next one. Enter the Matrix. Now, if you were a teenager in the 2000s, then you can't have avoided the Matrix. It was such a big thing. It was everywhere. And I was a huge fan of the films. And when the video came out, I was, I was right in there. All about riding on walls, all about the cool fighting mechanics, all about shooting guns. I haven't played it again in years. And I'm excited to jump back in and see if it really is as good as I remember it being or if that's absolute nostalgia. I remember this being a huge game when it came out, not just because the Matrix was so big, but because you got to fight alongside the original cast and because it had exclusive film footage from the creators of the Matrix trilogy. And with the Matrix being so popular, obviously people were drawn by this. I picked this up for £3.59 from World of Books. Again, it's cheaper on CEX, but they charge delivery. 
At the end of the day, these gains aren't ones that I'm looking to flip. They're ones that I'm looking to add to my collection. They might go up in value over the course of time, but at the moment, that's not really what I was concerned about. So it worked out for me. Again, if you're really on a budget, you can probably save yourself a couple of quid there. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the manual, which I'm kind of gutted about. So I'll probably keep an eye out to see if I can add that to it too. I didn't stop at one Matrix game though. And I promise I'm not that big a Matrix fan, not anymore, at least. I haven't even watched the latest film, in fact. But I also bought Matrix Path of Neo. Most of this is the memories I have of sitting there as a kid, plugged into the PS2, trying to complete these games. So I'm hoping it will stand up to the test of time when I replay them. I'll let you all know on the channel. Let me know if you've recently played it, what you think. Is it still any good? Have you had a good time with it? Fortunately, this one did come with a manual and it's still got the uh, little thing you could send off to Atari for exclusive information on future releases. And the manual's really beefy with this one and in perfect condition, which is exactly what we want. It was £4.50 from World of Books, which is £1.50 more than CEX, but again, no delivery fee, and it included the manual in great condition, which definitely cannot guarantee. In fact, I'd probably bet that it wouldn't come with the manual in CEX. And between the two of them, it means that's the full Matrix games added to the, to the PS2 collection straight away. And they're pretty cheap, easy to find, so I think it's a really good one to add to the collection early on. Next, I really want to have the Simpsons games in the collection. Now, I know they're not all very good, but I did pick up the Simpsons skateboarding. And there's a few reasons. I do want to collect a bunch of those skateboarding games that came out on PS2, because I think it was such a moment in time with the rise of Tony Hawk and all the imitations that came out and how everyone wanted to jump on that hype and how it's definitely slowed down a lot. But there's some great games in that collection. This. I don't think was one of them. I haven't replayed it yet, so I might be completely wrong, but it is A, The Simpsons, so why wouldn't I have it in my collection? And B, I have so much nostalgia for playing it as a kid. And I remember thinking when I played it as a kid, this isn't that good, but I still sunk so many hours into it, possibly because I love The Simpsons so much. It also came with a manual. And the manual's in really, really good condition. So again, that's something I'm really, really happy with. It was £8.9p from World of Books. Again, this is one of the ones that I picked up as the first two, three games I bought for the collection. And I was quite excited to pick it up. You can get it cheaper. It's £4 on CX. However, I like the fact that World of Books showed the fact that it had the manual. And I'm glad I paid the extra for it because the manual's in great condition, but also World of Books actually state if the game is in very good condition, something that CEX don't do. I'll actually let you know into a little secret. I worked in CEX, so I, I kind of understand, A, how much stuff they get through the door and how quickly they need to funnel it through, but also that there isn't really that much quality control in terms of the video games. And I'm not talking about bringing in games that are completely scratched up. They definitely check for that. I'm talking about if a game is slightly tattier, the case is bad, the manual's missing, they'll, they'll price it the same, put it on the shelf the same. It means that when you order something, they're not going to look out for the nice one for you. They'll pick up the first one that's on the shelf and send it your way. Obviously, this is something that can be remedied if you're in the store, if you're checking out the game, if you know what you're picking up. But because I'm doing a lot of it online, this works out better for me. I can go on a site that actually I trust what they're sending me. We're on to the last two games that I've added to the collection this time around. There's more in the post, so I'm excited to share those with you too. But I'll do both of these at once because it's uh, The Prince of Persia, Sands of Time, and The Prince of Persia, The Warrior Within. I know I'm still missing one. But first of all, these are the two games that I've got the most nostalgia for. The third one came out after I stopped playing PS2. I think I was onto the Xbox by that point, or I was moving out of home and losing touch with playing video games for a year or two whilst I focused on drinking too much. But these games mean a lot to me. In fact, one of the first video games I can ever remember playing was Prince of Persia on MS-DOS on my dad's computer. So when these games came out and I was a teenager, I was excited from the moment they were announced. And they lived up to the hype, especially Prince of Persia The Sands of Time was really special with, with the time manipulation mechanics they put in. It really was something very cool as a teenager. And the game was awesome. The Warrior Within followed it up, also being a great game. I've always got more nostalgia for Sands of Time just because I was there the moment it got announced and I was so excited for it and it lived up to it. 
And when the second one came out, I was probably distracted skateboarding and doing other stuff, trying to trying to get out of my shell a little bit because I spent a lot of my younger days stuck in my room playing video games. So I'm excited to replay these games and see if they're as good as I remember. I definitely think they are. I know a lot of people really love these games and I think the franchise will probably do some more stuff in the future. At least I cross my fingers and hope so. Unfortunately, this is one of the ones where World of Books, uh, yeah, didn't do that great a job. No inserts and the case is pretty tatty. It was pretty cheap. I paid two pounds for it with free delivery and I'll, I'll look out for the insert so that I can add it to it too. Prince of Persia Warrior Within did come with the insert, which is really cool and it's in really good condition. I paid 2 99 for that from Music Magpie. It's cheaper on CX, it's one pound, but Music Magpie don't charge delivery fees and it said it had the insert and was in very good condition. You'll notice I mentioned three main websites I've got stuff from. Now this section really only applies to the UK. The rest of the world will be completely different, but in the UK, CEX is the website that generally everyone goes to for secondhand video games. And they're pretty good. The annoying thing is that they charge the £2.99 delivery fee per item, so it stacks up really, really quickly. Sometimes they've got games on for 50p that other websites have on for £2, so you think you're getting a bargain. But unless you're going into the specific store it's in, you're going to get fleeced with, with a really big delivery fee if you pick up. 10 games like I've done here. So it just didn't seem cost effective after I picked up NBA Street. I have gone back to CEX for a few games, but you have to do the math. Sometimes paying the delivery fee works out cheaper than going elsewhere. In particular, when you go to the mid-range games, say the, the PS2 games that most sites have on at 25 pounds, CEX might have on at 18 pounds. A good example being The Simpsons Hit and Run, a game I wanted to pick up, and was looking out for, but it was generally more expensive everywhere else than on CEX, even with the delivery fee. I didn't actually pick it up from CEX. This is where Vinted and Depop come into play. If you've got games that are a bit more expensive, it's worth looking out for on there. I actually picked up Hit and Run on Depop, but I'll save that story for the next video because I picked up a couple of cool games on that platform. But I wanted to compare three main sites on this video whilst we're here, the three ones I use the most this time round. Those being World of Books, Music Magpie, and CEX. We've talked about CEX and their delivery fees. World of Books and Music Magpie both have much smaller collections. Music Magpie having the smallest, World of Books being fairly big, but limited when it comes to rarer games. However, neither of them charge delivery fees, which, which is amazing, especially if you're picking up a few cheap games. And they both generally do offers. You'll probably notice that they mark their games up a bit more expensive than CEX, and I think it's because they do the free delivery and they haven't got a physical store as far as I'm aware, so that's the only way you can get their games. Definitely keep an eye on the website if, if you're in the UK and are looking to pick up some bargains. I am looking to start some other collections, mainly Sega Saturn, GameCube, possibly N64, but for now, I am going to focus on PS2 and uh, try and accumulate the games that I'm after, which you're probably wondering, what kind of collection am I building? Do I want to collect every PS2 game that came out? Absolutely not, there's a bunch that I couldn't care less for. Do I want to collect every Rare game? Uh, no, that would cost me a fortune. What I want to do is collect the games that have a lot of nostalgia for me from growing up, or games that relate to franchises I now love. Like the From Software collection that I'm uh, dreading spending my money on, but also really looking forward to having. And that's it, the first 10 games that I've added to my collection. I'd love to know what you would have got first. I'd love to know what your collection is looking like, what you think of the games I've got, if you've played them recently, if you think they're any good, or if you think they're absolute trash. Either way, let me know. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. So yeah, I'll catch you next time.